In today's episode, we'll be talking about how to price your online course. Welcome to the Online Course Coach Podcast, brought to you by TrueFocusMedia.com. Whether you're a beginner or expert, this is the podcast for the latest in online course creation tips, news, interviews, and ideas. And here's your coach, Jeff Long. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Course Coach Podcast. If you're brand new to the show, my background and expertise is creating and marketing online courses And my specialty or my superpower is helping people create effective online course videos. Now, while I have plenty of podcast episodes and videos on the onlinecoursecoach.com website, specifically talking about video creation and, and creating effective videos, today I want to talk about something that affects us all. It's how to price your online course. Now, If you're wondering about this, this means either you are about to launch your course, maybe you have a course out there and it's just not getting the sales that you want and you're trying to find out how to better market and promote your course or even how to find that perfect price point. So the first resource I have today is my marketing strategy, 70 marketing tips to market your online course. So if you go to onlinecoursecoach.com slash marketing tips, you can download that free resource, seven ways to market your online courses. And it goes through a lot of different ways how to uh, build your market, grow your audience and influence and market your course. So regardless of what phase you are in your online course creation uh, process, marketing is key. In fact, I heard uh, somebody a long time ago say, Everything is marketing and marketing is everything. So, you know, if you're the type that has business cards, well, your business cards are a form of marketing. Your website's a form of marketing. How you present, how you teach is a way of marketing. So let's start at the beginning with how to price your online course. So first of all, just know that you and your knowledge are valuable. They have value and there is a lot of worth in it. So don't undervalue what you have. There's value in your experience, in your expertise, in your weeks, months, years, and decades of of experience you've had in the topic that you're teaching on. So there's also value in gathering the information and putting it into a roadmap or a recipe for success. At least that's what your course should be doing right is creating that roadmap for your students. So even if you feel like, oh, I, Jeff, I don't have, you know, decades of experience. Well, what if you were the one that gathered all the material together and put it in a course? There's value in that. So while you may not have the decades of experience, the content is the value. In fact, if you go to onlinecoursecoach.com slash value, you can Uh, Listen to one of my latest episodes about 10 creative ways to add value to your students. So whether you are in the beginning stages, middle stages, or you've had a course out for a while and you want to add value, go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash value to find out how you can increase the value that you provide for your students. But just know that you provide value. So don't undersell yourself. Don't undersell your course and what it provides. Now let's do some basic homework. So I think it's okay to look at what other people are selling similar courses for, because this gives you a baseline and a minimum of what you want to charge. Now I wouldn't recommend going to udemy.com to get that baseline because they are always experimenting with their pricing. Uh, They give away a lot of coupons. So the amount of uh, students in each course can be deceptive, especially for some of the higher ones, as well as you know, what they're actually charging because they give out so many coupons that some people just wait for coupons and then they buy a course and they probably don't finish it. And it just isn't a good place to go, but do some Google searching, find some podcasts, find some uh, different places, some private, uh, excuse me, not private, some Facebook groups where people are promoting courses or have courses and get a baseline. And if there's nobody in your industry, 
uh, what are other people selling courses for in a, in a broader industry? And I'm not talking about the internet marketing industry if, you know, if you're a piano teacher or a real estate teacher or something like that. You know, what's something in, kind of in a parallel industry that you can get a baseline for? Now, like I said, this gives you a baseline because I don't want you to be the minimum, the cheapest course. I want you to be in the middle to upper levels of what you charge, even if you don't have as much experience as somebody else. Because you don't want to be the lowest price course. Uh, you want to be one of the higher options because you'll get better customers, you'll have less problems. And honestly, students are more likely to complete a course and get more out, uh, excuse me, get more value out of it if it costs more. You know, is it easier to waste uh, $5 or, or $49? compared to $499? Well, of course. So if your course is, you know, uh, 25 bucks or 50 bucks, well, that's easy. That's kind of throwaway money. I know it's, it's not cheap, you know, um, you know, that's, that's going out to eat for a, a small family or for a date or something like that. So you don't want to minimize that, but $49 is not uh, a lot compared to $499. So if your course is more expensive, Hopefully, the student will put more value on it, uh, take participation in the course, and even get more value. And so then they would give more, you know, a better testimonial. So here's one activity I like to do. And I've done this with, uh, with different courses, with different products and services. I even do this with a lot of the corporate clients I consult with uh, as, we, as we talk about courses or different marketing strategies to promote their products and services. So Try to find out how much time the student currently wastes without your course and determine how much this is costing them. So if you can determine that, hey, this is wasting uh, five hours of a week of their life, and if you can ballpark maybe how much they're making at their current job, whether that's an hourly rate or salary, then you can determine, then you can know how much time that that problem is costing them. So position your course as helping them save time and money and frustration. So your cost should, excuse me, your course cost really should be a no brainer compared with how much time and money they're currently spending. So uh, a, a few years ago, I worked with a large uh, uh, construction training company and they had a learning management system that was ex crazy expensive. I'll just say that. It was had lots of zeros on it. It was bloated though. They couldn't do what they wanted to do. It wasn't flexible. They always had to call tech support. It just all these problems. So it was expensive and frustrating and it wasted their time. So I talked to the, one of the, um, the e-learning, you know, the head e-learning person at the company. I said, okay, how much time is this wasting you? And, and she said, you know, I would guess between, you know, me and my small team about 20 hours a week. And so I said, okay, if we're wasting, if you're wasting 20 hours a week, you know, times three people times a whole year, you know, I ran a, a rough calculation based on, you know, estimation of, of how much they each made per year. You know, th that company was potentially wasting, I forget what the, the amount was, but I said, hey, if my services, if my custom learning management system and, and, and what all I'm providing, if we can help save five hours a week, here's how much you will get back in time lost. And I calculated that out. I said, if you save 10 hours a week, here's how much time you'll get back uh, money and time lost and 20 hours a week. So I kind of gave a good, better, best, like a, a minimum, here's what you'll save, a, a good amount. And then, you know, hey, best case, if we saved 20 hours a week, then here is what you'll get back. And I calculated that out for them. And again, I don't, I don't have that in front of me, but let's say they saved, you know, um, uh, $2,000 per month that they, that I can save them with my custom learning management system. And so, you know, if that's $2,000 a month uh, times 12, that's obviously $24,000. And so if I came in and I said, hey, this uh, e-learning platform will cost $20,000. It includes X, Y, and Z. Here are my services. Well, imagine how much then they would save year 
after year after year because my e-learning, my learning management system doesn't have a, you know, a $20,000 per year cost. We might have some, you know, backups and maintenance and support and things like that. But overall, my goal was to show that what I was providing, yes, it had a cost, but it was lower long term than what they were um, charging in time, frustration, and money now. And on top of that, for me, the, the learning management system this company had was grossly overpriced for the lack of flexibility and, and things it had in it. So it was a no-brainer. And they went with us, you know, and so that was something I was able to provide with them. So again, think of your students. And maybe it's not time wasted. Maybe it's frustration. Or on the flip side, maybe it's, um, it's, the, it's learning your content and painting the picture. Like, hey, imagine what you could do with this, you know, n- knowing X, Y, or Z. I was talking to a, a uh, client of mine and they taught um, music lessons and they were saying, what if you could, uh, you know, sit down and play, you know, X, Y, or Z for Christmas or, or for birthdays? Or, you know, what if you could be the center of entertainment, of, um, of what's the word I'm looking for, um, you know, motivation around the house because of you can play this instrument? So paint the picture of the benefits of what it'll be. It might not be money saved or time saved. It might be things that are more valuable. Maybe it's memories made. You know, you could paint the picture, hey, what if you could, you know, by learning this content, what if your house could be more peaceful? Your family could have more enjoyment and there is more grace and forgiveness in your family. One of my uh, coaching clients has a course like that, so we can't position it with time, money, but it's more the intangibles, you know, the things that make a home a happy place. It it makes it enjoyable. It makes it where people want to be there, uh, not trying to, you know, be busy, but, but build on relationships. And then another strategy is pricing a course based on the value it provides. So again, that's my whole, you know, what I was just saying is how much value does it provide? Maybe the value is in time or money, Maybe it's based on other things you can't quantify, you know, like um, happiness or, or enjoyment. So think about the value that it provides. And then think of pricing that reflects that value. Now, one of the things I love to do and recommend and we go through with my coaching clients is pricing tiers and packages. So don't think of your online course as a one of one priced item. Now, if it's a smaller thing, like an entry level thing, maybe it's a mini course. Sure. Maybe it's $79, whatever. But if this is a a larger course, you know, 10 modules, 10 lessons, whatever that is, and it has a lot of content, what could you do to, to give three package levels? And I like to, to think of this as good, better, and best. I mean, you see this with electronics, you know, the iPhone has a a small, uh, you know, uh, originally it had, you know, 16 gigs, 32 gigs and 64 gigs, you know, hard drive space. Now it's a lot more than that. And so, um, cars have this, computers have this, a lot of different industries have these pricing levels. So what could you do to create a good, better and best pricing? So maybe the good, the cheapest uh, version of your course is just the digital content of your course. Not many bonuses, just the, let's say, 10 lessons. Maybe the middle package is the digital course and three bonuses. And then maybe the most expensive package uh, gives more access to you. So maybe it has a live webinar. Maybe it has group coaching or email access for a period of time and more bonuses. So think about ways you can stack the, the bonuses. You can increase the price for that good, better, best uh, pricing tier. And I like to have fun names. You know, you can even uh, Google search some uh, fun names for pricing tier names or pricing tier uh, terms or whatever, and and find some good ideas for that. But think of, you know, as you increase the price and don't just increase it $5, $10, you know, the, the good should be, let's say a hundred dollars. The better should be, you know, one and a half to two times that. And then the best should be, you know, maybe multiples of that. Maybe it's, uh, you know, two, three, $400 more. And it should give more access to you. 
it should have more bonuses. So maybe it has a, uh, a community with a Facebook group where everybody can interact. Maybe you offer course certification and you say, hey, by going through my course, I, and in, insert your name, am certifying you in my, uh, my special, um, what's the word I'm looking for? My, my special technique, you know, and you can, you can label that, you can give it a title. So even though there's not a official certification from the government, you are the one giving them that certification. I've seen that a lot. My friend Dan Miller does that with the coaching mastery uh, certification. He, uh, he endorses coaches who have gone through a program and gone through some courses of his, and then he gives them that kind of badge, that certificate of approval. So again, with good, better, best pricing tiers, what can you give that will give the most value? Now, something to be, uh, something to think about is you don't want to lose money with your pricing. Okay. So if you offer, you know, if you're scared and you do 49, 79 and $99, um, just know that you can't keep giving ongoing coaching access, everything, you know, to you for your students that they can have access to you. So be thinking, okay, what's, what will provide the, a lot of value, but maybe you don't want to offer it for the rest of your life, <laughs> all right? Uh, so this is one of the benefits of having open and closed enrollment in your course is it lets you say, okay, for the first uh, month, I'm going to give two free Q&A webinars. And so maybe you release, uh, you open up your course four times a year because you want to give direct access to you for one month per uh, semester, per quarter, per whatever you are labeling that as. So be thinking again of the value that it can provide and price your course accordingly. And then lastly, test price points with each update or release of the course. You know, it's okay if the first time you release it, it's $99. The next time it's $149. The next time it's $249 you can uh, test those things out because you're going to be updating the course, improving the course. Maybe you want to add different bonuses, different uh, upgrades, different things like that. So don't be afraid to test the price points of your course. So while those are my recommendations to price your online course, if you need to improve the marketing of your course, I have a free resource for you. Simply go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash marketing tips to receive my bonus resource of marketing tips that you can use to grow your audience, build your influence, and sell more courses. And so that helps you because if you only have one or two students, well, it's really hard to test your price points versus if you had 100 students, right? So the more students you can get in, the more you can test, the more you can offer in terms of value, bonuses, and content, and the more courses you can create down the future. So again, go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash marketing tips. Well, hey, that is all for today, but let me know what you are working on. I love your emails, uh, your tweets, and just uh, checking in on what you're working on. So are you planning a course? Are you promoting a course? Are you maybe redoing or updating a course? Let me know. Just shoot me an email, jeff at onlinecoursecoach.com. I'd love just to talk, chat with you, see what you're up to these days. And lastly, if you haven't gone to onlinecoursecoach.com in a while, you are missing out. There are new podcasts, there are new videos, new resources, and you can check all those out for free. So go to onlinecoursecoach.com where you can learn more. And if you need coaching, you can fill out the, uh, the coaching uh, form there, see if we're a good fit and send that off to me. Well, hey, keep coming back to the show. Keep learning more because that will help you teach better. And as I say at the end of every podcast, it is my goal of this podcast and these resources to help you to teach many to impact millions. <laughs>